The electrified version of Citroen's Berlingo Small MPV has remarkably few compromises if you're looking for a family EV. So, if you can afford the price premium and cope with the 174 mile driving range, it might be a tempting option if you're looking for a full electric compact family car and don't want a compact SUV. Here, there's the option of a 7 seat cabin too, which is rare to find in an EV at present. Courtesy of EV Power, the segment for compact people carriers may be about to get a fresh lease of life. What used to be called the PSA Group has doggedly continued to sell small MPVs as sales in this sector have declined and now may reap the benefit with fully electrified versions of the Peugeot Rifter, the Vauxhall Combo and the subject of this test, Citroen's eBerlingo. Like those two in-house rivals, it gets the 50 kilowatt hour battery that Peugeot, Citroen and Vauxhall seem to fit to every EV they make, even the biggest MPVs. Here, of course, a battery of that size is far more appropriate and it's been built into the car in a way that doesn't compromise cabin space. Sounds interesting. <laughs> So what's it like? Well, you sit quite high and SUV-like in front of a 10-inch instrument screen. And unusually for an EV, you don't always get a push-button start. We have an old-fashioned key ignition here. Anyway, turn on and you get a beep and a green ready message on the display ahead. And you're ready for MPV motoring electric style. As usual with Citroen EVs, the e-Berlingo offers three driving modes, Eco, Normal and Power. You won't want to spend too long in Eco unless you really are eking out battery capacity. Because it reduces the powertrain's normal 134 bhp output to just 80 bhp and also restricts the climate system to conserve power. Citroen recommends that you do most of your driving in the normal setting, which increases the motor output to 107 bhp. The top power mode isn't really intended for sporty driving, but for situations when you're carrying heavy loads. The powertrain also has a B setting, which increases the level of regenerative braking to a point where the car slows so much when you come off throttle that you'll very rarely need to use the brake unless you're coming to a complete stop. You'll want to know about driving range, which is claimed at 174 miles, around 30 miles less than the full electric Vauxhall Corsa and Peugeot 208 Super Minis that also use this battery. But is much closer to the range figure of the Citroen EC4, which also uses it. Like all electric vehicles, this one has a bit of a weight problem. That drivetrain adds over 300 kilos of bulk, but that arguably helps the eBerlingo when it comes to ride quality. You'll feel things like speed humps keenly, but at speed on the open road, it handles tarmac tears a little better than its combustion cousins. This eBerlingo feels really at home in an urban environment, surprisingly really, because it's quite a large car, especially in long wheelbase form. But you'll feel really confident in it on the school run because all-round visibility is great, the steering is light, and as we've said, the suspension deals with porous surfaces quite well. Parking's easy because rear sensors and a reversing camera are standard fit across the range. There's very little outward differentiation to identify this particular Berlingo's all-electric status. Unless you notice the lack of tailpipes and the addition of a charging flap, blue badging and trim accents are the only giveaways. This third generation Berlingo does a better job than its Peugeot Rifter and Vauxhall Combo class counterparts in visually differentiating itself as an MPV rather than a van with windows. You get a choice of wheelbases, M for medium, or as here, XL, the latter enabling the fitment of a third row of seats. 
At the back, it's pretty van-like, though Citroen has specified this model with a one-piece tailgate rather than the asymmetrically opening twin rear doors you'd get on the commercial van version of this design. As usual, though, what's more important is what you can't see. Like its Vauxhall and Peugeot cousins, this car sits on the PSA Group's EV-compatible eCMP platform. Because the battery pack is mounted beneath this MPV model's floor, cabin space is not compromised at all over comparable combustion-engined Berlingo models, though there's no storage space beneath the floor in this one. So let's take a look inside. At the wheel, at first glance anyway, it's much as in the old combustion-powered conventional Berlingo, or indeed a current Citroen Berlingo van. Once you've got used to that, if you look a little closer around, you'll start to see some of this EV variant's model-specific differences. This little EV drive toggle switch, for instance, that takes the place of the usual gear selector. And of course, there are EV-specific features on both of the provided displays. Let's start with the instrument screen, which in its standard layout has a battery indicator on the left, a digital speedo in the middle, and a power eco charge drive meter on the right. Using this little rotary controller on the left-hand steering wheel spoke, you can alter the screen layout through various settings. Whatever you choose, the resolution is sharply defined and easy to read, which can't really also be said for the central eight inch infotainment display. Still, at least it has a physical volume dial and more importantly, it's not burdened with the climate controls, which are separated out further down the centre stack. And it offers easy access to DAB radio stations, hands-free phone connectivity and media streaming via Bluetooth or a USB connection. Plus, there's smartphone mirroring via the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay systems. And you can pay extra for 3D navigation if you want it. There's a bespoke EV section for this eBerlingo, which has flow, statistics and charge sections. Enough with screens, what else? Well, if your perception of van-based MPV motoring is of something quite utilitarian, then you might be rather pleasantly surprised by the cabin quality that's served up here. Yes, most of the interior fittings are of the hard, scratchy kind, but you do also get a few soft-touch plastics and little touches of chrome. Overall, though, the prevailing ambience is still perhaps appropriately one of wipe clean practicality. We've saved arguably the best, though, until last, cabin practicality. If you were to add up the capacity of all the 28 different nooks and crannies available within the interior of this e Berlingo, you'd arrive at a figure of 167 litres, about as much as you get in the entire boot of some city cars. Not all of the areas provided are that useful. Anything placed in the areas behind the centre screen and in front of the instrument display is going to slide about annoyingly, as it will in the wide, narrow recess below this upper-mounted glove box. There's no lower glove box, just open storage in the space where you'd expect to find it, halved in size in this right-hand drive model by the adjacent fuse box. There's a cup holder at either end of the dash top and a useful stowage area for your phone is provided beneath the climate controls on the centre stack. Next to it is a small circular recess, useless for anything on continental spec cars. It houses a rotary controller for the grip control system that isn't offered here. The storage place you'll be using most is this simply huge covered lidded box between the seats, incorporating a rather hidden 12 volt socket. OK, enough on what the front of the cabin's like. Let's take a seat in the second row. Now, both short and long wheelbase e Berlingo models offer access to this part of the car via these sliding doors. And these are so much more practical than the conventionally opening items that kids so often use to dent and scratch adjoining vehicles in tightly packed car parks. The sliding doors are rather heavy to close from the inside, and this format means you can't have door pockets either. Still, on the plus side, this second row offers enough space to suit a wide variety of passenger shapes and sizes. Because the battery pack is mounted beneath this MPV model's floor, cabin space is not compromised. So there are vast standards of headroom, 
And because the centre transmission tunnel is virtually non-existent, it's straightforward to accommodate three fully sized adults if need be. Three individual rear seats back here are standard with both trim levels and all eBerlingos get these aircraft style seat back tables with cup holder points, but you don't get the useful underfloor storage compartments that used to feature on the old combustion models. Blame the bulky EV powertrain below you for that. Twin vents are provided back here and you get a separate climate control if you've a model with the dual zone system fitted. Lower down, there's a USB socket as well. Children will like that and they'll appreciate the fact that these side windows have proper electric up and down opening rather than the kind of fixed edge hinged arrangement offered on some small van based MPVs that smaller folk tend to object to. There are cup holders back here too, but you probably won't immediately notice them because they're situated over your shoulder, one on each side of the cabin. The holder on the right side flanked by a useful 12 volt socket. An option you might like to consider is the Modutop glass roof that Citroen's so proud of. This is a wide one section panoramic glass top covered by an electric blind and featuring a central floating style translucent arch that's edged with LED ambient lighting and incorporates various storage compartments that together have a capacity of up to 92 litres. Were we to be buying this Citroen though, we'd be tempted to pay the small amount extra for the XL body style we have here with its two extra boot mounted chairs. The fact that these sit within a spacious 4.75 meter body shape means that they can, at a pitch, be quite comfortably used by adults on short to medium length journeys. It's just another example of this Citroen's flexibility. Right, let's finish with a look out back. Now, this massive tailgate not only takes a bit of strength to lift, but it also needs quite a lot of space to complete its raising motion, with the results that in, say, a tight multi-storey car park, you might not be able to access it at all. Aware of that, Citroen offers a useful opening rear glass section, so you can more easily throw in small bags. To be fair, we should point out that when you do get the full tailgate open, there is a benefit to it being so big, namely that it provides quite an effective canopy under which you can corral your children if, say, you're dropping them off at school in the rain and they're getting all their bits and pieces together from the boot. Citroen also says that it's one of the things that makes owners go off and do things like tailgate picnics. That sounds more like a French thing to us, but we're getting off the point and ignoring one of the key things here, namely the enormous amount of luggage room on offer. But you don't really need it because there's plenty of room back here in the standard five seat version anyway, and in this XL lengthier variant too, if you fold or take out the third row chairs, in which case up to 1,050 litres of space can be freed up. The five seat short wheelbase standard length variant can swallow 775 litres in its boot. Fold down the 60-40 split rear bench and up to 3000 litres can be freed up in the standard model. With this XL version, it's up to 4000 litres with both the back seating rows folded. In addition, with either body style, if you're taking really long items, the front passenger seat can be folded flat, allowing items like surfboards of up to 3,050 millimetres long to be taken inside XL spec models. There are two trim levels on offer, Feel, as here, and Flare XTR. Both use the same 50 kilowatt hour, 100 kilowatt battery. And there's a choice of standard five seat, or as in this case, XL or seven seat body shapes. We'll quote prices based on those current at the time of this film in summer 2022. With base feel spec, pricing starts at just under 31,000 pounds. If you want the seven seat XL feel model, you'll be looking at around 32,000 pounds. The top flare XTR model in M medium length form costs around 32,000 or around 33,000 pounds on seven seat XL form. 
All feel models are delivered as standard with a capacitive 8-inch touchscreen featuring both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And inside, feel models also come with a Nemo grained interior ambience, green mica cloth, a folding front passenger seat and a one-third, two-third folding second row bench. All models come with tray tables on the back of the front seats too. The e Berlingo safety tally is reasonable too. All models fitted with Citroen's safety pack that features active lane keeping assist, active safety brake, cruise control with a speed limiter, speed limit recognition and recommendation, and driver attention alert. Plus, all feel models also come as standard with rear parking sensors. <laughs> We mentioned the WLTP rated range in our driving experience section, 174 miles. To optimise range, you'll need to make full use of the car's regenerative braking system, regularly activating the provided B mode via the central console to maximise energy recovery during braking. As you'd want, the e Berlingo supports up to 100 kilowatt rapid DC charging, with an 80% recharge taking less than 30 minutes, while a full charge from a 7.4 kilowatt single phase wall box takes seven and a half hours thanks to the 7.4 kilowatt onboard charger. Customers with access to three phase power can specify an optional 11 kilowatt onboard charger that will charge the e Berlingo in four hours 45 minutes when using a wall box that also supports this faster home charging solution. As usual with a compact zero emissions EV model, there's a benefit in kind first year tax rate of just 1% and exemption from London congestion and ultra low emissions charges. Maintenance intervals are much as they would be for a combustion model, but they'll be less for the workshop to do, so costs should be lower. There are plenty of Citroen outlets to choose from, so you should never be too far from one. So you can budget ahead, the French manufacturer offers its Citroen maintenance scheme that lets you pay either a one-off fee or monthly instalments to cover the cost of the routine upkeep of your car for as long as three years and 35,000 miles. There must be plenty of people out there who want a family-shaped compact electric vehicle, maybe as a second car, but don't want an SUV. It would have to be realistically priced, have an acceptable driving range and not look too van-like. The e Berlingo, to our eyes anyway, ticks all these boxes. For whatever reason, there's a bit less of a whiff of LCV here than there is with this model's two Stellantis Group cousins, the Vauxhall Combo E-Life and the Peugeot E-Rifter. And the option of having seven seats gives this Citroen a big advantage over a comparably sized and probably pricier all-electric compact SUV. Plus, this Berlingo can be a van if you need it to be. Jack of all trades then, and master of one, the art of bypassing fuel stations.